Frida Kahlo and her Animalitos by Michael Brown, illustrated by John Pata. This is a story of a little girl named Frida who grew up to be one of the most famous painters of all time. Frida was special. This is also the story of two monkeys, a parrot, three dogs, two turkeys, an eagle, a black cat, and a fawn. They were Frida's pets and they were special too. Frida had a parrot named Bonito. Like a parrot, Frida was colorful. She liked to wear bow shades that celebrated indigenous Mexico and her own heritage. She lived in the house. The color of a parrot's bright blue feather, La Casa Azul, where she grew up with her mom, dad, and sisters. Frida had a pet fawn named Granzun. Like her fawn, Frida had watchful, beautiful eyes. When Frida closed her eyes, she remembered her life as a little girl. Frida was always with her father, a photographer who taught her to look at the world through curious eyes. Frida and her father would walk to the park to collect bugs to look at under a microscope. Frida's father also taught her how to paint finishing touches on his photographs. Frida loved the small brushes with the beautiful colors and the beautiful colors. Frida had a cat with a black shiny fur, the same color as her long dark hair. Like a cat, Frida was playful, but as a child, Frida couldn't always play. When Frida was sick, she got very sick. She was in the bed for a long time, but little Frida didn't get sad or bored. Instead, she used breath to make mist on her window, and then she drew a door with her finger. Frida used her big imagination and curious eyes to walk out the door with a magic friend and a little girl who danced and played like a kitten. Frida was independent like a cat, and... Frida's sickness left one of her legs different from the other, and children made fun of her. But this didn't stop Frida from skating and riding bikes and rowing on the lakes of Chapulita Peak Park. So, Chapulita Peak Park, so that her leg could get stronger. But Frida was not afraid to do things other little girls didn't usually do. She wore overalls and boxed and wrestled. Frida had spider, had two spider monkeys, Fulane Chang and Camito de Waibad. Like her monkeys, Frida could be mischievous even when she was a teenager. When Frida was 15, she went to a school called the Preparatoria and found a group of friends she loved. Like Frida, her friends were curious to learn all they could. Together, they read and studied and argued and sometimes got in trouble when matching caps. They wrote donkeys to halls of the preparatoria and set off firecrackers. Frida had an eagle named Gerdus. Like her eagle, Frida's imagination could fly high. When Frida was 18, she was in a terrible accident, and once again, she had to be in bed for many months. This time, Frida didn't create a magic friend. She created art. Frida's mother made her a special aisle and hung a mirror over her canopy bed as Frida could paint. Frida used her imagination and curious eyes to do just that. Frida what do I need for when I have wings to fly? And if those... I gotta, I gotta read right now. I'm reading a book. I gotta record. I'm doing... Uh, I'm recording. And if those... My bad. I, yeah, my bad, Miss Cobb. That was my... Uh, another teacher that was talking to me. Sorry. So, that doesn't count. All right. <laughs> and if those were in the fence, Frida had two turkeys and three dogs. Senor Olotel, Senorita Capulín, and Senor Costi. 
Frida's turkeys were intelligent and sensitive, just like herself. And like Frida, her dogs were warm and loving. When she was on the inside, she would wrap her arms around them, and they could comfort her. And her Ole dogs were the same breed that ran and hunted with the Aztecs thousands of years ago. And a reflection of Frida's heritage, of which she was very proud. Frida's dog had no hair, but their bodies were warm. Frida gave them great big hugs whenever she felt lonely or sad. Frida's and El Manitos were spirited and entertaining, just like Frida. When her two spider monkeys were being good, Frida them like babies when they were being mischievous. They would steal socks and food and leap through the window so no one could catch them. Her parrot named Bonito liked to snuggle under the covers while Frida took naps and would do tricks at the dinner table for the pet pet pats of butter. Frida's animalitos played all day in the courtyard at La Casa Azul, the bright blue house on Laundress Street. Her husband, Diego Lavira, even made the animals a pyramid to climb on so her pets could run friendly. When Frida painted, her pets would keep her company and Frida painted all the time while the birds sang, the dogs barked, and the turkeys danced in the garden. Frida's animals were children, her friends, and her inspiration. Frida painted when she was sick and hurting. And Frida painted when she was happy. She also painted when Diego was gone, <clears throat> when she was sad. But Frida was never really alone at La Casa Azul, the bright blue house on Orange Street. She had her animalitos and herself, and she painted both. Painted both. Frida painted herself with full and chain, playing with ribbons. Ribbons. She painted herself with Bonito the parrot and Senor Colote the dog. She painted her black cat too, peeking over her shoulder. Frida painted herself with all the pets she loved so much, and even butterflies and caterpillars. Her paintings were magic, and today if you visit La Casa Azul in Coyacan, just outside of Mexico City, you might hear the sound of a bird or see a black cat jump from a pyramid that sits in the courtyard of a bright blue house on Wendy Street in Frida and Hernalitos so many years ago. The end. Oh, should I read the... I think I should read the author's note. Uh, I'll read some of it. I don't know if this counts. I wasn't paying attention, I ain't gonna lie. So, Frida Montonian, Carmen, Frida Kalu, and Kalu Doreen, otherwise known as Frida Kalu, was born in 1907 at 247 on industry in the city of Coyacan, which means places of Coyetes. And Mayate, the language of the Aztecs, Frida, as she came to be called, was the daughter of a Misati Mexican mother and a German Gunagan father, or something? Gunagan father? Yeah, that's what it says. But, I think that's it. The end. Appreciate it.